Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I am Ryan Keyes, your host for Spirituality with a Spin. And boy, do we spin it. So we have been talking about the twin flame phenomena and soulmates, life partners, and this inevitable task of running, chasing, reuniting, discovery. And first, let me apologize. This is an interruption in my runner chaser cycle um, because I felt like we're a little too focused on branding the phenomenon running and chasing. It is there and it needs to be discussed, but we need a break. We need a breather. We need to know what are we chasing and what are we running towards. And I apologize also, I have a little bit of an allergy issue because the wind is kicking up and blowing dust all around so if i don't sound myself that's why i am happy on the inside i am a fire i am on fire i've had hundreds of people contacting me and we are interacting i am intuitively counseling and giving readings to so many people we are making headway because this is a point of where all of us as fellow creators are coming to a crossroad. We have been consciously called by our creator to create. The Twin Flame Purpose is about a conscious wake-up call. You see, we focus so much on the 3D. We focus so much on this flesh that confines our soul. And it's impressionable. It has an intelligence. It wants to survive. It wants. When I had my near-death experience, my body heightened my senses after I came back. Why? Because the body refuses to go back to being dead. My soul doesn't die. My soul doesn't have a scarcity. My soul doesn't fear. That fear, that recipe for running, exists in the flesh, the ego. Ego. You have to let go of the ego. You have to confront the flesh. You have to understand that just like we were talking about, if your flesh is a guitar and your soul plays the song, if your guitar is out of tune, it can't play that song effectively. Hence why so many religions talk about to be courteous to your temple. Your temple is your fleshly vessel. Eat right. Do things that are healthy. Focus on health. Focus on well-being. It's not about image control. It's about allowing the soul to inhabit a temple that is healthy. Because you can't manifest the things that are necessary to become to the place where you need to be if you're not focused on these evident facts. Tune your instrument, baby. Tune your instrument to play that soul song. We all have it inside of us. And think of the twin flame phenomenon, that soul search. When it is upon you, it is a symphony. It's going to make others around you dance because you're playing it. Yes, the running, chasing, the separation. If you focus on the flesh, could become eons. It could go from months to years, from years to decades. It could end the 3D connection, the flesh. Did, did you hear what I just said? It, the flesh, could cut the 3D connection from the 5D interaction that wants to transpire in the 3D world. Your soul is calling out the creator has called you to to come together to go back to the garden of goodness to go back to the origin where the divine being that manifested us all said it is not okay for one person to be here it's just not right i'm going to make it too so whether man came first or woman came first we don't know we could be from a woman's rib i'm open to thought on that perceive what you like 
But every story on this planet has a garden, has an origination, has a genesis. And in that genesis, man was manifested. Man was not manifested as a singular soul entity by itself because it doesn't work. You need the gender polarity, the masculine, the feminine, the yin, the yang. You need it. It's a fullness. It's the fabric of foundation to build your house on a rock. So if you are in the midst of struggle, in the midst of depression or anxiety, because you're chasing and the other person is running, we need to kind of say, hey, that is that spiritual seesaw. But let's see it as a sacred dance. It's momentum. It is a chance to become one with yourself, to understand what it is that is going on in your heart, in your mind, to purge the things which have held you back. Like when I fast, I fasted for 30 days one time. Now, don't go doing that because I've said it. You can do whatever you want, but check it with doctors and do it. I myself fasted for 30 days. In that 30-day time, wow, awakening city. I saw things in a different light because my body no longer controlled me. Think of it if society no longer controlled you by fear. If the media didn't pump you full of fear and scarcity, and if Disney didn't pump you full of fantasy world, if you just had an organic experience, whoa, how original, how awesome. So when I fasted, I went back to this organic interaction of self in a world because I not only fasted food, I fasted media. I didn't want input that was negative. I didn't want to feel that oppressive force that comes with egotistical awareness. Everything will match you. Energy matches energy. What you resist persists. Someone wonderful told me that one time. I'd like to thank that person. Once you match your energy to the truth, that truth becomes an energetic pattern. It allows you to create more truth. Now, if a part of you or a part of your twin flame relationship isn't feeling it. It's because they haven't gotten to that point. It's not bad. It's a seesaw. It's an up and down. It's a balancing act. Because the flesh and the blood do hold back us from understanding the energetic consciousness quite a bit. And Media has orchestrated many things to try to encourage us into a state of independence, not really wanting the family to be a focus any longer. There's a reason. The powers that be, the society that kind of sways us, doesn't want us to have an awakening. They don't want us to embrace this spiritual purpose. Why? Because that comes with balance and love and understanding and a conscientious nature of handling the world. The boogeyman would be gone. There'd be no reason to fear. There'd be no reason for war. There'd be no reason for weapons. And yes, is it a bit of a utopian, idealistic dream to think that? Possibly. Or have we just been told that that's idealistic and unattainable? If we weren't being moved around on the chessboard of consciousness and we were allowed to awaken, think of the dynamic changes that would happen in this world. Heck, just think if you were aware that you came back 
lifetime after lifetime, that whatever you're manifesting now, you're going to grow up in in 50 years. That would play on your, <laughs> your life. Your dynamic would completely change then because you're like, wait, wait, you mean I got to grow up in a small gridden world where water is $200 a gallon? Whoa, let me change it now. Keep in mind, going back to the guitar scenario and the music scenario, when you're out of tune, you can't play the song you need to play. It's going to rake on the ears of those around you. You need to establish a natural harmony with yourself. You need to get into nature. You need to understand how nature works. You need to understand your, that you are a fragile being. You don't fit in on this planet. If it wasn't for intellect and for intuition, no human would have survived. If it wasn't for our intelligence, we would not be here. The planet is too harsh, too controversial. There's too many things on there that would have killed us. But we were giving divine intuition, spiritual self. And those that are at the top, that are greedy and scared of losing what they have, have forced social karma upon us. And by us not standing up for our awakening and our spiritual self, we have allowed it. I have allowed it. Now, when you come together with this twin flame, it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be like you've never felt before. Instant, instant, instantaneous aha moment. What's going on? Wow, I didn't know that. I didn't feel that. That is incredible. You're going to feel a connection. You're going to feel a vibrancy. You're going to feel this fulfillment of soul. You're going to experience this unusual feeling of love. It's going to raise your frequency. It's going to heal you. You're going to begin to give birth to this ascended idea. It's going to satisfy your human needs. It's going to help you contribute to self-growth and love and a connection. People are going to be drawn to this. You're going to break through these inevitable challenges that have faced you. You're going to have a trust issue, yes, because scarcity from society has put this upon you. They don't want you to feel this situation. If you're running right now and you're listening to me, Stop. Think about what are you running from? What are you running to? And to understand you are meant to be one within your being. If you're aware of your twin flame connection and you have encountered the twin flame connection and you resist it, it will persist. What you're facing right now, you need to dive in deeper. Dive into your truth. Dive into your awareness. Allow the organic nature to transpire. Understand that masculine and feminine need to come together to become complete. Are we incomplete as we are? No. Fleshbound, we're here. We're a body. But what's that hole you have inside? What's that little feeling that is down deep in that recess of your soul? That longing for when someone calls your name that you love. For when someone puts their hand on your back. That essence is projected. Your efficacy is effected. The energy is multiplied. Now you tell me that was not ordained and designed by the being, the entity, the God, the creator that manifested you. Don't let anyone steal your divine. Don't let anyone make you believe that you crawled out of the mud. Einstein didn't believe it. Steve Hawkins doesn't believe it. And they're a leading scientist. Einstein said the deeper he dove in, the harder it was for him to explain away a manifestation of a godlike entity. And you know Stephen Hawking has already said that. Einstein also said that energy never dies, and energy does not come from nothing. 
We are something, people. We are something, and you feel it inside. If you're listening to me right now, give me an amen. Give me a hallelujah. I'm not going back to church days, but I am saying I love the way that sounds. It feels good. So open that heart chakra. Embody that bliss. Model your connection with a higher vibration, with a 5D understanding. No wonder the 3D ain't happening. We can't get to the 5D understanding of what the 3D is doing. We're sitting here talking about cutting cords and cutting attachments with our twin flame. No. Cut the cords and the attachments with those that were not your twin flame. With that baggage you're bringing along with you in this experience. Cut that. Done. Those ties are done. You've got one of the major things that's going to happen when a twin flame couple ignites. It's going to be scary. Because, go with me for a second. Imagine that you are separate entities that were one at one point. Go to the garden with me. The flesh is a symbiotic being. It has its own innate intelligence. That's how you breathe at night when you're sleeping. Right? Involuntary. But yet not. So, some things that happen after the permanent twin flame reunion, when you guys get it going on, and you're there, and you are in the moment, and you've put the 3D aside, because the 3D doesn't want this connection on the 5D realm. Your body doesn't want the twin flame experience. That's why it's hashing up all these odd emotions. That's why it's pummeling you with all this perception. That's why the, the body's only tool is to go back to the scars of the past to prevent this future elevation. Because the body feels that as these two souls come into the 5D experience, whoa, that soul's gonna leave me here. I'm gonna be just an empty vessel going back to the dust. My days are numbered. Because if I allow this to happen, they're going to transcend and I'm not going to be in existence. I won't be a heart beating anymore because they don't need me. So untrue. So let's look at the 3D. Let's reformat our concept on the 3D. Start reassuring your body through manifestation, meditation, vision boards, getting in your prayer closet. Start reassuring your body that this connection is going to enhance the body, that this connection is going to prolong the life of the body. Just go with me on it. Give the body back a little bit of benefit from this experience. Get the body on your side. Get the 3D on your side to experience the 5D connection. Because it's afraid. It has that innate fear. That's why it's fight or flight. That's a body. That's not a soul. Souls don't run. A soul is not afraid of a grizzly bear. A soul isn't afraid of going into the light. Shit, it lives in the light. <laughs> it's the body. We need to awaken ourselves, break that egg, let the body feel secure in this event. For the body is where the foundation of doubt lies. The body is where the foundation of fatigue in this situation is echoing. Just as your body holds onto a scar from a past thing that you've experienced, trauma. Oh, the body is a nasty little being. It will hold that emotional scar and it will remind you by kicking in. Like I just talked about. You can cry when you're happy. You can cry when you're sad. You can feel that heavy heart when it breaks or that heavy heart when you have to make it a great decision. Think about it. So this shift after this reunion, why do you want to get a reunion? Why? Because the energetic self feels complete and fulfilled and matched. It no longer feels like a piece of something is missing. It's not elusive. It's not a drift in this big soup bowl. The challenge, yes, is the sense of belonging, connection to the rest of the world, an interaction, feeling like you're going to be strained with this event, but it's going to better you. It's going to better you. Don't let the void become full of depression and doubt. Don't let the body manipulate you with fear. The soul is not afraid. 
Anybody tell me, does the soul have fear? Is the soul afraid to die? Because the only true fear that we have in this world that is across the board for everyone, that is unbeknownst, and it's not necessarily being afraid as much as it is concern, but for some people it is a fear, is the fear of death, the fear of permanent disconnection, the fear of being, the fear of being permanently unplugged. There's a guy named Jetty Krishnamurti who dove into that topic and how if you can get past the fear of death, then you've got a foundation that is unstoppable for awareness to ask the questions that need to be asked. So when you find this perfect fit with your twin and it's contrasted, it feels a little out of place, it feels foreign because not many people experienced this in the past or did they? Maybe they just didn't say it. Maybe we just didn't have a label on it. Maybe those long-term relationships where people came together in the 40s and in the 1800s, like my grandmother. Maybe those relationships were twin flames. Hmm. Maybe that's how these people stayed together. Because when I go into a nursing home, I see people that are still wearing their wedding ring. And their husband's been dead for 10 years and they were married for 50 years and it was the best thing that ever happened to them. And they said that they would never change one thing about that. Sounds like a twin flame to me. So this phenomenon has been happening a long time. But now it is in a bigger call. It is in overdrive. 2017 is the year of the twin flame. Trust me. Because consciousness is waking up. The creator calling us. It needs volunteers. It needs us to come together conscious coming together and you're much more powerful together than apart run all you want but you can never tell me that when two stand together it is going to be stronger than one that's why many many religions say wherever two or more are gathered in agreement as touching what they agree upon is bound in heaven as it is on earth as above so below it is done two or more not one there wasn't one person in the garden. If there was, we wouldn't be here. There was two, a mama and a papa. Now those souls interact and those souls can interchange. It doesn't mean that your physical facade has to house the female, that the physical facade has to be a male to be a male. It just means that the unity of two entities that were one, broken into two, coming together to experience this nirvana, this love, then we allow the 3D to dive in and to create crisis, depression, conflict, fight or flight, chase or run. Yes. And then one of the other shifts that you're going to experience in this twin to twin relationship is the priority that it's not like anything you've ever done. It's going to elevate your life's purpose. It is going to become this role, this endeavor. It is going to become aesthetically wonderful, healthy, it's going to increase family ties when you come together because it is about changing the energy of that which is around you. Once you can get past the 3D hurdles and resonate your song in a 5D understanding of what has to be brought together, you will find strength. You will find a permanence in an impermanent world. The soul is permanent. The body is impermanent. One of the third things that's going to happen when you have a wonderful twin flame extravaganza, when you guys come together, both partners are going to have the most wonderful, intimate encounters. You're going to co-create you're going to plug in that which has been separate becomes one. And this is a convergence of frequency, a harmonization. This goes into a spiritual elation. This is what they're talking about in the Kama Sutra. This is what they're talking about awakening the Kundalini. This is why the yin and yang are spinning in a dance. Be empathetic 
and intuitive at the same time. Give and take, but don't move away. One of the fourth things that could happen in this twin flame fabulosity of coming together. You've cultivated patience, understanding, love for what is opposite you and your own quirks. You have found a compliment to you, a, a, a mirror. You've been able to finally see yourself because no one else on this planet has taken the time to show you. No one else could have shown you the deep-seated places that needed to be swept out but your twin. No one else can pull you into this provocative place of spiritual enlightenment. Because spiritual enlightenment is provocative. It is just enormous. It's electric. Finding that common ground is like winning a war without fighting. When both partners begin to manifest according to their individual ideas, but they co-create in a perpetual symphony. So embrace and cherish the yin and yang duality. Let those opposing elements contribute to the resilience and the fuel that you need to build the twin flame fire. The more you begin to divide yourself or to allocate protective areas to shield you from being one with someone, you're planting seeds in the wrong field. Co-creation, coming together, equals calmness and elevation. It's a calm in the chaos. And as a couple, you are much more equipped in this environment to live, to survive, to give, to show love and compromise, to allow the 3D logic to experience the 5D allowing. I would love for everyone to find their twin flame. I would love for everyone to be able to merge in that unique soul experience. When you look into someone's eyes, you can see their soul. And that's how the twin flame illumination is recognized. When the twin souls begin to merge and their eyes are connected, even if it's across the way, those eyes reflect back to each other, a mirrored embodiment of self evolution. Those souls have recognized each other for many eons. The body is not on board. The body is fabricated in this life. So of course the body is going to be overwhelmed because it doesn't understand. This soul consciousness takes a while to wake up in the body. And that frequency and that fire scares the flesh. So we need to learn how to encapsulate that, how to embody that, how to put that fear of the flesh that they're feeling to the side. Reuniting is not easy. The phenomenon of separation is not easy. The running and the chasing is not easy. No. But when you experience a certain level of self-rationalization and realization, and you begin to see that the twin flames serve a divine purpose, that they come into your life for this deep, perfect love that your soul craves. Your body has no idea about this love. Your body's just geared to breed. So that shakes up everything that's going on in your current reality. It's about expanding your consciousness. It sends your chakras into overdrive. Your, your direct mirror, your polar opposite, your exact energetic vibrational match becomes flooded with this information and this energy. Then you're forced to stand face to face with your deepest fear. And that fear 
reacts in the flesh. And your flesh tries to sway you. Your flesh tries to convince you. Your flesh is like that little devil on the shoulder saying, Hey, let's go this way. Let's don't get involved. Let's not do that. And then the ego steps in. And it compounds this feeling the flesh has. And the ego says, Well, you, you, connecting to your higher self is dangerous. Connecting in a 5D is dangerous. This isn't happening. This isn't so. What about when you got hurt? What about... This isn't going to pan out. You don't even know this person. You can't even see this person. What do you mean love at first sight? What do you mean that, that that's not even possible? Spiritual recognition, soul recognition, and the ego goes on and on and on. Self-protective instincts to protect the flesh. Mm -hmm. So we need to change the struggle and the ideas. We need to shift where are the fight's at? The fight is of the flesh. Get your temple in order. Understand the body is yours to control. Find your 5D resources. Find your spiritual resources. Cling to the spiritual. Allow energy movement. Allow energy balancing. Allow intuition. Allow these things to begin to happen. Allow this awakening to overpower the illusion that the body has that it is predominantly in control of your entire life. We already know that disease is associated with emotions, and we already know that emotions are associated with being held in the flesh, experiences that have become reality, that have been manifested. Your soul walk. But your soul doesn't get disease. Begin to see your true self. Begin to see your divine nature. And then you find your strength. Then you find your balance. Then you find that this running and chasing thing is nothing but a brand. Nothing but a label. Because you don't run. You don't chase. Your soul is not separate. It sits right there. And that's why you feel the need to run. Because your soul is stuck right back in the beginning of that spot. Not running. Sitting. Because as soon as you are aware of your twin... start has begun. The starting gun has fired. The clock is ticking. Tick, tock, tick, tock. The awareness of that has already began. And yes, you may not be together in the 3D world, but if you're not together in the 3D world, I am inserting that it is because one party, one person invited to the party, does not want to partake of the elevation of the fifth level of experience. And it's not bad, because you'll come back, you'll be with them again and again and again until you get it right. But we need this confrontation to stop. We need this conflict to dissipate. We need the coming together. We need people to answer the call. We need success stories. If you've got a success story of a twin flame experience, leave it in the comments. Leave it in the comments. Share with all of us. We need it. We need to see what is possible in the present. We need to see that that God sent encounter is about something bigger. That that sparking of direct communication with the divine, of two becoming one, that external validation, that existence of this agreement, of this catalyst. This twin flame phenomenon is coming to pass. We need to see that. So leave that down in the comments. So we can see the spiritual capacity. So that we can see what we can be. Ascend, my friends. Ascend. Focus on your temple. Eat as healthy and as much life-giving stuff as you can eat. Get to exercise, get outside, let the sun shine its light on you. We need to come back to ourselves, our true selves, so that everything falls into place. You need to see the divine. Stop letting the media tell you that you are a fear-based being. You are not. Scarcity is a lie. <laughs> we were given everything we need here to survive, to thrive. So that is what I believe 
we need to strive for in the Twin Flame Union, the benefits of being in the Union. Sorry for running on. If you've gotten this far, you are dedicated. I appreciate it. Subscribe down below, leave comments, and look out. I will see you on the other side.